Good morning, day seven. 20 minute check in in the morning. All right, so this is Thursday. Was supposed to be a total washout all day, what they've pretty much been calling for all week. But the forecast gradually changed as it typically does when it gets a little closer to favorable conditions at least for part of the day and then this morning when I got up radar was clear south and west of us percentage had gone down in the 20s and 30s for rain until about 2 at which time it was supposed to start in earnest so we decided we found us a short section we could do to log some miles and about five five and a half that we can get in and get done before the bottom falls out so we are now hiking from where you would get on the trail to Manchester to Mad Tom Notch so the trail Looks like this in front of me. Mud, rocks, and roof. So we're, you watch come along up there. He'll jump back and forth. Nothing about a straight line walk. Now, surprised he ain't, he's even within visual. He tends to hike faster. Of course, he's already got a pump knot on his head from hiking faster so I'm taking my time I don't need anything like that in any case we're going up and over Bromley warming hood at the top probably stop up there and get us a bite to eat although we didn't pack a lunch because we're only going to be out here for maybe three and a half four hours don't expect to have a view at all at bromley so the goal here is to get away unscathed and to log a few miles watching checking in with other through hikers and stuff everybody is pretty much obviously in this area in the same boat and of the same mindset about Vermont so it is tough and these conditions are brutal as far as what folks are used to particularly from Pennsylvania the southern Pennsylvania border south or at least until you start the rocks in Pennsylvania but I had a foo hiker who if I mention his name you would know exactly who I'm talking about he said he preferred Pennsylvania over this anyhow so obviously the radar in the Percentages were wrong because it's raining But it's not raining too hard because we're not getting too wet down here in the forest Oh, it's gorgeous. All right, I'm shutting you down taking a photo Where'd you go? Huh? Oh Which is a little different than having an under the rock. <laughs> Which is where you're usually at. <laughs> so it's a nice change of pace not to be <laughs> under the rock, but behind it. That's right. <laughs> I was getting ready to comment about how slick these bog boards are oh, yeah. and their lack of hardware cloth availability in the north, apparently. <laughs> when you made my point and almost fell right there <laughs> on the uh, bog board. That's right. <laughs> so... Uh, enough said, huh? That's right. That's 
Absolutely. Yeah, so down south we have what's called hardware cloth. And basically it's very thin gauge expanded metal. I guess is if you know what that is. But in any case, it's a lattice work, like very tight chicken wire, thicker than chicken wire that most clubs put on their bog boards, their creek crossings, all that, because uh, it gets really slick. And just like you saw, come on, almost bust it coming through there. And that gives you some grip. So in the case of up here in Vermud, uh, either that, ha that hasn't occurred to them, they don't want to do it for whatever reason, or there's not availability. Uh, so I just tend to think that's the way, their way of not doing things is not to put hardware cloth to give you a better grip. And it can make them really slick. I mean, just putting water on a treated piece of lumber in the woods would, after a while, it would be slick. Well, not after a while. In a short period of time, it would get slick. But with the mud up here, it gets slick pretty quick. And you have to be real careful going across them. So, anyway, note to Vermont maintainers. Um, if you need to know what hardware cloth is, Google it. And take some and staple it or tack it down. Because it really helps not having accidents and stuff on those boards all right that is my trail lesson advice i'm sure they want to listen to my advice for the day for the well i take it back not for the day we've known some other maintenance things we'll talk about that as we go help the trail other things that they don't do that really seem to work great down south so we'll piecemeal those on the hike today and then at the end of the day we'll recap with come along and see if he has some comes up with ones i didn't talk about and in doing so you can get to see some of ver mud and ver rain and ver roots and ver rocks all right, we're on the Ver Trail, on the Appalachian Trail. All right, we have come out of the woods on Bromley Ski Mountain, so we've come on to a ski slope. Looks like a blue, because it's definitely a flat, not a lot of area in here. Not a lot of drop. I uh, haven't got to the summit yet, but we're probably a quarter mile from the summit. It's supposed to be a warming hut up here, so we'll take a break, maybe eat a little snack up here. Definitely walking in this high grass over there. I was getting some, uh, getting socks wet. Trying to avoid getting my feet wet today. Although, I guess we're only hiking six-ish and put up with pony feet for that long, but prefer to keep them as dry as I can. But anyhow, so we are on Bromley Ski Mountain. It's uh, raining a little bit, not too bad. Came out of my sauna suit, aka z -Packs. I guess that's vertice rain jacket which dry enough but it's like every other rain jacket it doesn't breathe real well so you heat up in it 
I don't know what people, I guess they don't hike it when it's covered in snow and there's skiers on it. Off into the midst we go. All right, we'll chat at the top. Well, this is what the top of Bromley looks like. It's the summit. <laughs> kind of cloudy. This is what it looks like, though. <clears throat> Some giant piece of concrete up here. It's got a shiv on, sieve on it, or shiv. It looks like it's made for pulling cables or something up the mountain. But I don't know what this is, but oh crap, it's all grown up. So that means we're going to get wet. Trail maintainers haven't made it up here this far, I reckon. Heard John hollering, oh, holy crap, I guess that's what he's talking about, is this mess through here. All right, let me go. Good gravy. All right, so coming down, probably, mad, down the Mad Tom Notch. Right enough now where the just trails just turn to mud again. So now we're rock hopping and trying to keep out of the deep stuff. Uh, and also, trail maintainers hadn't been by in a while, so they hadn't cut the brush on the sides. So a lot of times you're fighting the mud and the brush on the sides. But anyhow, it is what it is. So we'll, uh, we had two and a half, <coughs> two and a half back from the summit and we met a guy that he had I don't know he asked a lot of questions older feller asked a lot of questions of us thought it might be a caretaker but said he was going back down to the shelter and meet some through hikers so uh, wanna know if we were section hikers day hikers through hikers LT AT he asked a lot of questions had his shirt didn't have a jacket on. Had his shirt unbuttoned down to his navel. I'd say he'd need to go see a skin doctor. Looked like he had a lot of cancer on him. Moles or something, but he, uh, yeah, it's kind of unusual. So, anyhow, we are going on down. Retread's already down there waiting on us. Mr. Always Faithful. Of course, I guess he's bored. He's got a book to read. He about finished it, I think. But anyhow, he's uh, really, really made a trip. So we're going to get on down there and maybe go to the laundry. Again, I am out of dry socks. Holy cow, how am I going to get through this? Picky path, picky path, picky path. There's a lot of that back and forth. A lot of muscles you're using that you don't normally use on a hike. Fortunately, we've been slack packing everything except the last three days and that helps out tremendously. All right, well, this is just more of the same mess that you've been seeing. So we'll probably come at you one more time and call that a day hike. <laughs>